I'm back with another video today and I wanted to talk about how to learn how to love yourself again, how to be more confident and all of that good stuff from somebody who was gone from confident to unconfident to body dysmorphia to confident again I can pretty much say I can give you guys some tips that I've done that have helped me in a dr drastic way to go from having low confidence to confidence to losing it all over again and to gaining it all over again because when I was a child I didn't start off with low confidence up until about third grade when we moved to Hawaii well I was in the second grade but the bullying didn't start till third grade but we moved to Hawaii when I was in second grade and you know I remember second grade having a cool year you know being fine being happy as a kid and self-esteem high and everything having friends but come third grade something changed I don't know what happened so I actually think I do know what happened I had my first encounter with a bully and this wasn't your regular bullying this was more racial so in Hawaii the the population is mostly Filipinos Hawaiians white people it's a small population of black people who are living there um so at this particular school it was a mostly filipino dominated um school and i don't know who knows about filipinos a lot of them can be very very colorist and very very racist people so i'm the only black girl in the class i remember being the only black girl and I stayed getting bullied from this one particular female, but she was like the ringleader and everything. You know how that whole, they have the ringleader bully and everybody else bullies you because of them. Like literally. <laughs> but this type of bullying was different because my hair was different. Like, because I have type four hair. So, you know, when I was in third grade, I was wearing like pigtails and stuff. So I would get picked on because of my hair a lot. And for being black, being the black kid in the classroom. So that affected me for, you know, for years growing up, not even realizing that's where it came from. But I even remember, if you guys remember my textures from story time, this was the same year I cut my <laughs> hair out of my head. You know, the kitchen in the back of your head. I remember being in class, cutting the kitchen out of my hair because I thought it wasn't supposed to because you know how it knots up when you have tight forehead and like the back of your neck I remember grabbing scissors in class and cutting it in class so my self esteem was affected around this time and I also remember my mom introduced us to perms around this time too we were using the perm boxes I remember my mom always used to say she would regret putting perms in our hair because we had good hair before she did that or whatever so I remember having long hair up until seventh grade like really long hair like you know I had a perm and everything I think we were using perm boxes so my hair I don't know what happened because after seventh grade when we moved to Japan my hair wasn't growing the same way and my mom blamed it on the water out there i don't know what it was but i digress um maybe another story for another day but you know um my self-esteem issues started around third grade because i would have, i remember not feeling the same after that because i was dealing with this bully for the next three years so i was at that school from third grade to to the first half of fifth grade so that was only two years but I had to deal with her this entire time her and her minions like she was the reason why I had a complex about my hair I used to even remember playing with dolls that had 
the looser textured hair because I wanted that type of hair. I'm I'm actually working on a documentary about texturism right now. I'm I'm really late making it. I was supposed to have been made it, but I'm making it right now. It'll be ready in a couple of days. But yeah, I had a complex about my hair growing up. Um, I would watch. I was a Disney movie girl, so you know the Little Mermaid. What was it? Uh, uh, Princess Jasmine. You know all the Disney movies. I was a Disney girl, pr- Disney princess girl. Had, and I remember none of the princesses had my kind of hair. So, that was a part of, you know, my psyche, and how I felt about my own hair. So it was the Disney movies, the kids at school picking on me, and I was a shy introvert even back then so I didn't tell my parents I was being bullied I just kind of dealt with it I don't remember why I just chose to deal with it I remember crying all the time and stuff I had or no friend I had a few friends but you know I felt kind of lonely for real I felt like I was different than everybody else so you know not having a mom I didn't talk to my mom about that so I, as a little girl growing up you're just kind of dealing with self-esteem and stuff you know so I dealt with that till fifth grade then in fifth grade we moved so me and me and a military brat I've been to like 13 different schools so the first half of fifth grade we moved to my grandma's house which is in the hood in South Carolina and I don't really remember too it was blurry in that era but then from that the second half of fifth grade I went to Virginia and this was the hood also so this is my first introduction to being in the hood and so my best friend out there she was unambiguous dark skin and that was my best friend I remember her (laughs) I want to say her name but I'm not gonna say her name but I remember her. We were very cool. I mean, I had no issues. You know, my self-esteem. I don't remember having an issue around this time. So, you know, coming from that school in Hawaii to being around people that kind of more look like me and treat me different. So, you know, it was cool. Then I went to sixth grade. I was still out there. This was in Virginia, Southern Virginia, like Hampton, Virginia Beach area, sixth grade. Um, Norfolk to be exact and and this was my first time being around all monoracial black people like for the first time in my life because before Hawaii was in Missouri so I was around all white people so you know this is my first time being around being in the hood basically so think about how I grew up around white people, Asian people and here I am I probably talk white to them and it was a culture shock for sure for me at this school but this is around the time where I remember acting hood for the first time I remember that video I made acting hood to fit in because I wasn't fitting in but I knew people you know I made friends at this school and everything even guys started liking me at this school I remember this one guy asked me out and I kind of embarrassed him, and I feel so bad about that because he really liked me, but I kind of brushed him off in front of his friends, and I feel so bad about that because I was trying to show off so bad in front of my girlfriends that I was trying to be cool because they was like, ew, why, why he like you? And I kind of did think he was cute, but because my friends, you know, I kind of let them make me act some type of way, and I, <laughs> I still feel bad about that to this day. But, you know... This was my first experience being the one of the cool kids. You know what I mean? So, and then let me think. From sixth grade, so I left that school after sixth grade. Seventh grade, we moved to Japan, Okinawa, Japan. And I'm there for the next three years. And my experience there was cool. I mean, multiculturalism at this point, I've been, I've been around all white people, Asian people, and black people so coming to Okinawa 
I'm a, it's a mixing pot of all of us all at once so this was my favorite school year ever seventh grade in Okinawa Japan I had a mixture of friends from white to black to monoracial to Asian it was a mixing pot of all of us and we had a, like a little click so you know it was cool and everything self-esteem check at this time was cool I guess you know but I did I was a little bigger like not too big like how I wasn't as big as light skin Keisha how thick she is I'm trying to think maybe I spice thick maybe a little smaller than her so self-esteem check and at this point you know I was just big for real so I remember trying to lose weight around this time you know I was cute and everything I had boys starting to like me and stuff around this time so I was like oh and I started to like boys around this time I think puberty and all of that was going on I wasn't stuffing my bra anymore at this point my boobs was coming in so boys were starting to like me or whatever and I had a crush on this one boy um <laughs> yeah I had a huge crush on this one boy he was the exotical male too but I'll do that story time later <laughs> Um, I don't want to get too deep into that story time. But. So, 7th grade was cool. 8th grade. 8th grade, we moved again to another location in Okinawa, another base. So, I had to leave school. So, this was my first favorite year of school I've ever had in a long time. And I have to move. And then I had a crush on this boy and we had to move. So, that crushed the shit out of me. I was like, I don't want to leave this school. I don't want to leave my friend. It's like the coolest year ever for me, right? So then we, ha we have to move. So I go to this new school. And that school was cool too, you know. I was filling up in my boobs and stuff. I was getting cuter in the face. I was I'm maturing and stuff. So eighth grade, you know, as much as I hated the move and that crushed me, my self-esteem check was still all right. I think I skipped something. No, I didn't get that far yet. Okay, so we're still in eighth grade. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> so this was a cool year. My friends at this school was mostly monoracial black people. You know, my best friend, I my best I almost said her name. <laughs> my best friend, um, she was a light skin monoracial. So my, she was like my best friend to this day. Um, yeah, my best friend. So in the base that we moved in, it was like houses next to each other in like a U shape. And all of us were monoracial black people. Um, and we all got along, we all hung out. It was cool, it was like a we had block parties and everything. So this was cool. Um, you know, I'm hanging out with people that look more like me now, black people. You know, at the seventh grade school was cool because it was multicultural and I liked that environment. And this was cool too because everybody got along and everything. I didn't have a bad experience at this time. You know, guys were starting to even like me even more. Had my first boyfriend in eighth grade. Um, Cause I started experimenting with earrings around this time i yeah i remember this was around the era where cookie jackets no ice cream jackets was a thing and like the golden hoop earrings and i think uh baby fat was just about to die because i was wearing baby fat in sixth grade so this was around like ice cream jacket era stuff like you know what i'm saying this is like 2000 and 2005 2006 Chris Brown just came out. I had all the Chris Brown. Trey songs just came out. I had his posters on the wall. So I was going through that era where I was liking boys more and boys was liking me. So I had my first boyfriend and my next boyfriend. And this is when I realized I might be prettier than, you know, I'm pretty. So I'm starting to feel pretty. I'm starting to be, feel cooler and people are starting to like me and stuff. Okay, so I'm like, so eighth grade, we about to go into ninth grade high school, right? So I wanted to get pretty for high school. 
because I go to, I was going to church and I went to church with girls who were going to high school already and I used to look how pretty they was and I would study them and I was like I want to look like them when I go to high school so I remember wanting to lose weight I remember wanting to wear makeup and experiment with getting rid of acne and stuff and I was I remember going through a strict diet during this time so between eighth grade and ninth grade the summertime I remember my, there was a try there was a bike a workout bike in my room that my mom just left in my room because my room was the biggest and I used it and I would use that bike every single day during that summer and then I would run in my backyard with my dog and I remember just working out and drinking nothing but water. This was the first time I started drinking like gallons of water because I was a juice head before that. And now I was trying to drink nothing but water and it was working. And I remember going, to, walking all the way to the, the commissary and the PX to buy some, some uh, cleanser for my face. And, you know, it was working. I was looking prettier and prettier doing out the summer. I was bad by the time I was ready to go to ninth grade. But guess what happened in ninth grade? We had to move again. So we had to move again. From Okinawa, Japan, where I, my life was so cool and lit. And my self-esteem was like, yeah. Boys was liking me too. So this was like the very beginning of ninth grade. I don't think we got past month two of being in ninth grade before we had to move. When I say ninth grade, in the first month of high school was lit for me. I had joined the dance team at my school. I was on the dance team. I was popular. This boy that I thought was so fine, he had these bright brown eyes, long hair. He was so attractive and he had the biggest crush on me and I remember finding that information out and I was like, really? Right when I'm about to leave and all this good stuff is happening. And I was in love with somebody else too, but and this guy like me, I was like, okay, what's up? But this is, this, you know, I'm, this is lit for me. And then we have to move, like, for real? And guess where we got to move back to? My grandma's house, because we don't got nowhere to live yet. So my grandma lives in the hood in South Carolina, if you guys remember. So I'm back in this neighborhood. It's really a small town. It's a very, very small town in South Carolina. It's country, the country hood, country folk. So I... I I'm going into the from multicultural again and being around a mixture mixing pot to going around monocultural again. So this school was all monoracial culture. Culture wise I'm talking about. Not specifically people. Cause in Okinawa there's multi there's monocultural black people and there's multicultural black people. It's a mixing pot of all of us. So coming to South Carolina again it's, a, it's back to monoracial mindsets. So this is my first real experience with colorism and all of that stuff, right? Because the instant I stepped foot into that school, mind you what I look like, you guys. Just if you guys don't remember what I look like. I kind of have, I have the same phenotype as Holly Bailey. And I, use, I get uh, fancy from the Jamie Foxx show when I was younger, too. So if you guys could picture either one of those girls walking into a monocultural school um i'm multicultural so i not only do i talk white i dress a certain way i carry myself a certain way so i come across bougie stuck up to the females but to the guys i am they are hunting me down like you guys remember, I came to this school. I remember being so it had to have been longer than a month that I was in ninth grade because my third day of school was Valentine's Day. I remember this. I remember this like it was yesterday because it was like my third day of school coming. And I remember Valentine's Day. It was Valentine's Day. I'm still, I, this is my third day of school. At least 10 guys bought me gifts. I'm like, so for those who don't remember this story time, it was like 10 guys. So you know how in the beginning of school, in high school, if you guys had like a place where you all would gather before the bell rang, like whether it either be outside in the courtyard or inside, we had the gym inside. 
so as people are coming in there's people sitting on the bleachers like think of like a basketball game where you're walking in and you have to sit on the bleachers till the bell ring i'm coming in all eyes are on me and i'm like what the fuck is going on here so i sit down in like the top corner and i remember men coming one by one with gifts it was something out of a movie like people was just men was just coming with gifts coming at me and i'm like how am i supposed to hold all of this stuff i had a whole bunch of stuff it was overwhelming and i remember girls giving me looks and then just guys was just all day i was just getting gifts it was overwhelming i had to have asked one of the teachers could you please hold some of these gifts for me because i i can't just take i have to go to class i had like four classes to go to today i can't carry all this stuff with me and my mom dropped me off and stuff so i had i had I had one of the teachers hold it for me until school was over and then when my mom came to pick me up she saw all of them gifts i saw her face just kind of like in like indifferent like me and my mom have issues i think my mom was always just low-key jealous of me anyway she had nothing really to say about it whatever she just helped me with this stuff or whatever but you know pretty privilege was hit different at this school it did pretty privilege hit different um this was my first experience with haters and everything and people just hating on me for no reason females it was something out of like I felt like a celebrity for real at this school and I was at this school for a couple of months until our house was ready and VA and we moved there and that's where I finished ninth grade so when we get to Virginia it's back to like a mixing pot because I'm on a base school so it's a mixing pot of people uh this was a cool school i guess i had a mixing pot of friends back to that multiculturalism that i'm used to boys still liking me and stuff so you know cool self-esteem check is still cool but you know it was kind of fucked up at that school i just left from my grandparents in south carolina with all the girls hating on me because this is where me and my mom started to be. And my mom started affecting my self-esteem. Because she thought I was being fast when I was out there. Because she was like, all these boys like you. But I was getting called fast for that. Um, <laughs> so my mom would always call me fast. She always thought I was pregnant when I would be sick. And I remember like I wasn't even having sex yet. And she thought I was pregnant every time I got sick. So my mom's affected my self-esteem more than anybody else did at this particular time probably the entire time I was growing up and just didn't realize it until then I think that's when I started to realize my mom was weird about me so you know you know I'm ninth grade 10th grade I'm at this school and on the base or whatever it's cool or whatever 11th grade is when I started to have sex um so i had my the guy who took my virginity i was in love with him but he ended up cheating on me and all this stuff so i think the first time i started having sex is when my self-esteem started to go back down the drain because of this guy i was in love with and he kept hurting me because i was very much a good christian girl and i wanted to save myself for the right person and i feel like if i was having sex with you i thought i wanted to marry you and we had that type of a relationship I followed him to college and everything, this guy. We were together for three years. Um, it, we, we were on and off again for three years. Um, I, we couldn't leave each other alone, but he kept cheating on me. But he took my virginity, so I didn't want to let him go. But I was 16 and young and dumb at the time. So, you know, I think that I know what I'm doing at the time. So I think because I introduced sex into my life, my self-esteem was going down again i remember around this time having issues with my how i felt about myself and then me and my mom at this time were having issues as well so i think that's playing a part in how i'm seeing myself mind you i'm pretty this whole time but i'm starting to view myself different like i felt like my value was starting to go down maybe because i was having sex i can't i think it might have been the case introducing sex into my life definitely might have played a part in my self-esteem along with my mom not helping but yeah maybe i'm having an epiphany about that right now but so you know 
11th grade, 12th grade. I'm still dealing with this guy. He's affect he's affecting how I see myself because he's cheating on me with other girls and I'm comparing myself to other girls and that's the first time I started doing stuff like that. So I'm like, why does he like her? What is it about her? I want him to only be with me and you know, I think I started to do that whole thing with myself and started comp that's where you start messing up. You don't want to compare yourself to other people. That's in my notes. Um as far as how to be more confident never compare yourself to other people that's like my one of my main downfalls especially if you're with a guy who's always cheating on you with certain types of women you can't let it affect you your self-esteem and you can't let it be like is it because i'm ugly no it's not because i had pretty privilege before this and during this it's just i was only my, my vision was tunneled to him only in how he saw me. I forgot about how I saw me, how other people saw me. It was all about how he saw me. And that affected how I saw myself and how I carried myself in the world. I, used to, I remember walking with my head down more. I was more quiet. So, you know, I followed him. You know, we graduate college together. We go to college together. But we only stay for, like with each other for the first half of freshman year actually sophomore year is kind of when we officially stopped dealing with each other so we were together for a hot minute and i was in love with him the whole time i, I was trying to let him go so you know i was trying to date other people around this time but i was still in love with him so i was battling with that just trying to let him go always seeing him with new girls because we were on and off like i was saying and even when we were on, sometimes he was still seen with another female. And I, that was affecting how I saw myself for some reason. So never let a man affect how you see yourself either. Don't, because that can really, especially I was young and I didn't have a mom to talk to about these things. I let it get to me. But, you know, after we stopped dealing with each other officially, I started seeing another guy that I was attracted to this was the first time I was attracted to somebody else like really attracted to somebody else to the point where he released me from him so I started liking him and it like you know and this was a cool relationship I have nothing bad to say me and him are still friends to this day and he's married to somebody else we just didn't work out but that was a cool relationship for me um self-esteem check still kind of low from the previous relationship now i'm looking for male validation at this point so i'm hoping this guy likes me now and i'm doing everything i can people pleasing at this point starts to come up doing things for the male gaze pick me behavior and what have you so this was sophomore year sophomore year i remember it was fun because i didn't have a son yet i didn't have a kid yet so i was so my first year being like single and dating and stuff so i was dating after me and him broke up i started dating this other guy and the next guy so i was experimenting this was a fun year for me i was being a college kid for real so then going into junior year for college i meet this well i kind of know this guy from high school already we just started to talk again and me and him end up dating and he ended up being my baby father, long story short. And this guy kind of bring my self-esteem back down to a whole nother level of low. Because he, while me and him were together, I was I started to fall in love with him. And I think he's in love with me. And we're trying to build his family. And I had his baby for him. And he kept giving me sob stories about his life. And I'm starting to feel bad for him. And he had to, you know, I felt, I started to become a person that was trying to save people. And... He was just one of those people that took advantage of me for that. And the whole time, I'm thinking, you know, we're having this baby. But why is he not coming with me to my doctor's appointments and stuff like that? Because the whole time, he had another fiancé he was seeing behind my back. So this affected me and my self-esteem and this bitch and how she will always be trying to affect how I she was part of my shit too because she was a monocultural bitch 
from the hood and she you know how people from the hood when they try to throw shots at you it can really be some serious stuff they say some stuff that really hurts you they really go for the juggler and I wasn't used to that type of behavior like people talking so nasty about you and this bitch will always email me nasty stuff stuff that would actually affect my psyche for years I actually let that shit affect me for years what she said to me like she would say stuff like you're always gonna be a baby mama you'll never be nothing compared to me and you know when saying stuff like this from somebody who just went through being compared to other women with the last couple of relationships for some reason I let it affect my psyche and it, I let it affect me for years because I don't know if anybody who had ever just had a baby with somebody they thought was there for them and was in love with and find out they was cheating on them around this time not only was he cheating on you he didn't even come to the baby's birth you had to beg him to come because he wasn't so he wasn't there like I kept email texting him calling him he was not answering the phone I was like your son's about to be born and he missed the birth and everything but the whole time he was with her so I'm dealing with all of this new baby going through probably post depression whatever they call it so I'm going through all of this I'm getting sick off of it like I'm starting to throw up because it's starting to affect me like that so my self-esteem is not as good right here because I just had a baby and my stomach's still big I had a c-section so my stomach's kind of cut now my you know I had swelling in my face and so my self-esteem wasn't the greatest around this time so I was a junior in college when I was pregnant so throughout, when I was a senior, I was a single mom. So my first time being a single mom. So dealing with that, for, you know, I'm going through it. Me and him, I'm still trying to work it out with him, even though I know he's cheating with her. And she's rubbing it in my face through social media that they're together all the time. And it, it was really affecting my self-esteem. And not only that, I'm working on this video where I'm talking about hater friends and I had a hater friend around this time who just was not helping in the situation she was always throwing it in my face as well that every time this guy would cheat on me she was like look he's doing it again with her like she would be looking for the cheating for me I'm like girl I don't want to see that so it was affecting me so so a quick word of advice don't ever let a man be the reason why you look at yourself a certain way because that was my mistake so don't do that. Don't ever, like if a man's cheating on you, you deserve better than that. Don't ever let it be like, oh, you're not worth anything because he's doing that. Don't ever think that. It's not even that. He has his own issues. You know, it's never you. It's always them. So that was one of my mistakes. Thinking that my value came from how a man saw me. And that's not even close to real. Because men don't even value themselves. So just keep that in mind. So I carry this mindset with me to my next relationship. And at this point, my self-esteem is pretty low again. And I dated this guy who was always in and out of jail. I stayed with him for three years. I even married him. Ugh. <laughs> Big mistake. So that's how I know. When I became a single mother, I let that affect how I carried myself in the world. Because remember the other girl said, I'm always be a baby mama. And I kind of let that bother me for years. Like I told you guys. And I kind of let it do. So I took any person who would take me, forgetting who I was, completely forgetting who I was. But I'm still the person the whole time. I just forgot who I was. And so dating guys, I noticed and having sex and babies is going to cause issues so you kind of have to really value your body as a woman when it comes to being confident that's what confident women know how to do value their bodies people who don't have confidence aren't going to do that 
so people run all over you and treat you like trash treat your body like trash you treat yourself how you see yourself so you gotta learn how to value yourself and that's the mistake that's the lesson i didn't get from my mom my mom was teaching me those things i kind of had to walk in the world and learn these things on my own so i want to teach the girls who don't have a mama who teaches them to teach them you know i'm trying to go through my history and see where what happened and i've noticed it's sex guys that caused it don't ever let a man don't ever let a man make you feel worthless that's one of the main things i want you guys to get out of this story time don't ever do that because that's kind of where it can happen that you become a pick me and desperate for male attention and you don't need it because you've had it the whole time you just forgot because you're so tunnel vision on this one guy and how he sees things and people can't even see what they have until it's gone anyway when it's right beside you so let's just keep that in mind so while I'm with this guy who keeps going in and out of jail I marry him and then a couple months later I joined the military so a self esteem check still kind of where it was actually you know what happened when I was dating this guy he went to jail for like a year and then he got sentenced for three years so during that whole year wait I was with him was just waiting and self-esteem was whatever but I started to go to work again and my my pretty privilege was picking back up because the customers was hitting on me and stuff so that you know I was using I was basing my validation off male gaze at this point so I would constantly get male attention at work and that would kind of build it back up and then I would go from this job to that job and guys would like me all over again so it kind of reassured me or whatever and then I started to like this other guy mind you I'm still with this guy who's in jail but fuck him he's in jail that's kind of where I was at with it and I started to like this other guy at my job and me and him started to have a little relationship on the low I probably <laughs> oh whatever I'm just gonna talk about it who cares um so me and him kind of have an on the low relationship for a couple months um, that's kind of the story time where I told y'all that the two dudes were fighting over me at work when they were best friends this was that relationship so yeah um yeah my self-esteem was cool you know guys were starting to like me again so I felt like okay because I didn't know how to get my validation from anything else other than guys because I didn't know how to do it yet so you know that's cool and then I joined the military had to leave that and then I while I'm in the military I meet somebody else and this guy is a sergeant so you know they the sergeant and he's making me feel good pretty and all that buying me gifts and all these things and I'm like this is a sergeant he wants to like me. you know I was getting a validation from this that and the third but I noticed every time a guy would like me, I would start to feel good again. So definitely pick me mindset at this time, still military. So at this time we were in Poland, we left Germany. After we leave Germany, I go back to Kansas and you know, I'm still waiting for this loser to come out of jail. And he comes out of jail and I get out of the military and he doesn't change, so I instantly divorce him, and I become divorced a year later. At this point, I'm back in VA. Uh, Self-esteem check, pretty good at this time. I'm working on myself. I still have this emptiness inside of me somewhere from something. Um, trying to find myself, because I didn't know who I was yet, looking for validation in people. I think that's kind of the missing link there. I wasn't looking for my own value in myself. You have to find value within yourself. And then I was always doing things to please others. So I was, that's taken from you as well. Even how I carried out myself, like how I like to dress, I would dress because other people wanted me to dress that way because the guy I was married to was Muslim. So I would dress 
very conservatively. I used to even wear the hijab and everything when I was with him. But, you know, I was all that's taken away from who I truly am. So I'm, after I leave him, I meet this other guy. And this guy is alpha male as shit. And I didn't even heal from the last shit. I'm still going through all of that. And then the guy I was dating in the army, I'm dealing with emotions from him. So I'm going through a lot at this stage, right? And then... So I'm with this guy now, and this is the guy I'm with currently. We've been together five years now. He's an underground rapper. Um, his lifestyle was kind of different for me because I never wanted to date a artist. It just kind of crept on me slowly. I don't even know. I just kind of my self-esteem, but it's still not. It, it clearly wasn't good at this point I think I was starting to experience the body dysmorphia really heavy as a matter of fact when I was with this guy because this guy was very humbling of me He every, every time he felt some type of way he would talk about other females and how attractive they were and I had to check him about that so I was like I don't like when you do that so it would affect how I viewed myself every time he would he would do it all the time he would do it all the time he would even look at other girls in front of me while we were in public. That shit affected my psyche. So I started, not only did I have anxiety around this time because my parents were dealing, giving me bullshit around this time. And he was giving me bullshit with his humbling tactics and whatnot. So all of that was affecting me. I didn't know myself yet. I'm still dealing with shit with my son's father, trying to get him to act right and just see his kid for once. So all of this is affecting me. My, I'm not taking care of myself pretty privilege-wise. Like I used to, like. So I kind of let myself go in a sense around this time period. And around this time, this is when we moved from the East Coast to the West Coast. And if you guys remember, we ended up homeless because of a scam. We were supposed to get a home when we moved over here. But we ended up getting scammed and the place wasn't real so we were homeless for a while so i didn't have a house we lived in hotel rooms so my pretty privilege you know i didn't wear makeup i couldn't buy my skin products like i wanted to we were just dealing with trying to survive so self-esteem check low again actually my self-esteem my anxiety was getting really bad to the point where I had to go to the VA and get mental health checkups. It was real bad. I think the homeless shit didn't help either. So around this time, you know, and then I'm with this guy who keeps talking about other females every blue moon when I'm already feeling some type of way. And I was like, when I reached this level of low in my life, I was like, oh no, I have to go talk to somebody about this. So I made a conscious decision. I remember this day. I need to go get some help for this. There's got to be something I could do. I don't want to keep feeling this way. Because I will catch myself studying other females on social media, comparing myself again. That's not that's not what you want to do here. So I know I'm good looking. I just lost myself somewhere. So once I went to therapy again, and therapy helps. I promise it helps. If you have self-esteem issues and you don't know what else to do, go talk to somebody, a professional, because it helps. It really helps. I can promise you it helps. So, after I was seeing therapy for body dysmorphia, you specifically want to ask for body dysmorphia if you have it because that's a specific set of procedure that goes into that, to helping with that specific mindset. And it helped me. And not only did that help me, but I re y'all remember what I also said helped me. Exoticals United helped me. Because all of this time, I'm dealing with all of these different experiences. And come to find out, a lot of it is gaslighting. Like, females, the way they treated me. And the way people would treat me for no reason. Even in stories that I haven't even shared with family members and friends. When Exoticals United was talking about certain things, and I was relating to it, and I was like, yeah, 
but yeah that's yeah that's why this my mom might have treated me like this and this person might have treated me like that and it all made sense and it was like i'm not crazy after all and and before you know it you know i'm trying to tell you therapy on top of exoticals content has helped my self-esteem and then when i made my channel started to talk about it like even this is helping me realize things this story time making me go back into childhood and think like where things started at and where i'm at now i love myself more than ever because you know what i did i stopped people pleasing i stopped caring what other people wanted me to do i stopped trying to appeal to other people's not trying to hurt people and all of this stuff and live for me y'all remember like i will go natural and everything i love my natural hair but i just don't know what to do with it and part of that has probably to do with my childhood i'm sure with how i see my hair but you know how i actually like the way my hair looks is um relaxed and with light brown streaks um highlights and it's okay you know i used to worry about people thinking i was stuck up or bougie if i dressed a certain way and wore this and that but i stopped doing all that and exotica united let reminded us reminded me that it's okay to do what you want to do regardless of what anybody else thinks just because i want to wear my hair straight doesn't make me anti-black and that's something i used to worry about people thinking i was colorist or anti-black or not down or whatever that couldn't be farther from the truth i'm just trying to live up to my own beauty standards and that's um sometimes straight hair sometimes curly hair with light brown highlights with my feather extended clip ons and you know i wear the feathers because it kind of enhances my indian native features because i don't have black features i don't see in my face you can tell i'm black because i don't know my phenotype i guess but when you look at my actual facial features i just see an indian mixed person i don't know so i benefit from featureism and um colorism and so i kind of play into those features a little bit like i have a light golden caramel undertone and i like to play with gold gold looks good on like warm undertone so i like to like wear gold glitter around my skin and gold earrings gold jewelry um i like to accessorize and enhance i like to wear light brown contacts cinnamon honey colored contacts but i don't like to do too much you know what i mean keep it nice and simple and classy looking it gives lori harvey so when you become when you meet your beauty standard for yourself you start to feel better and that's what i've noticed so that's what i started doing regardless of people with what however people would think i'd be bougie whatever if i want to wear all pink i'm gonna wear all pink if i want my hair straight today curly today i can do it however if i want to wear um clip-ins i can do that i can do whatever i want and that's a part of you know meeting your own beauty standard is a big part of the confidence part of it all for me especially when i started to meet my own and stop worrying about what other people thought of me so it was that it was also setting boundaries when i started saying no more to things that i didn't want to say you know yes too you know it made me start to respect myself more naturally anyway and people started to naturally respect me more and i started doing what i want more you know and realizing that it's okay to say no and you know fuck who don't like you you know it is what it is setting boundaries is a big part of you know building that confidence up and welcoming your feelings when they come and not holding them in this was around the time i became spiritual and everything i had my spiritual awakening so i started to do research on spirituality more and finding your spiritual place is big 
but that's how I found my true self right there. When you dig into your spiritual self, to be spiritual, st- you know what I'm saying? When you when you when you study your spirituality and you know who you are finally, everything is complete. So that's a big completion of it all. If you're not spiritual, you know, cool. But for those who are, I know that's the completion of it all. Taking care of your body, eating healthier. I started eating healthier the more I started to naturally respect myself. And you start to feel better, you're working out. You know, you just start to feel better all in all. You're less tired all the time. You're more happy, you know. I'm I'm taking these supplements that help improve my mood so I'm not as, you know, cranky. I'm more happy, more chill, more laid back. Forgiving yourself for things that you've done in the past that you're not proud of, but you're probably still holding on to regrets or what have you. Let it all go. It's in the past. It didn't happen for a reason. It did happen for a reason. You have to understand that, move on, and live in the present. Let go of trauma that no longer serves you, even if you have to go seek help to do that. What's the point of holding on to trauma? That happened like 30 years ago. You know what I mean? So we got to learn how to let that stuff go. It just holds on. It's like carrying weights. I'm going to try to find a video and post it here. I'm not going to forgive you. I'm just going to carry this weight because this is my reminder that you wronged me. And then somebody else wrongs you, and you go, you know what? I got this one, too. I'm going to carry this weight around. And what happens is, over time, you start to pick up some more. Somebody else does you wrong, and then somebody says something to you you didn't like. Pretty soon, you're just walking around like this, and you're just going, man, tell you what, when these people apologize correctly, then I'll start forgiving. You're waiting for the person who wronged you to volunteer to take the weight off you. Can I just tell you, that's you. It ain't going to happen. But the truth is, you can let go of the weight. You can go, you know what, I forgive. I forgive that person. I don't even tell them I forgive them. I just forgive them. And I'm going to forgive that person who did me wrong. And you know what, God, I forgive that person. And you know what, I'm going to forgive this guy too. And you know what, those people who hurt me, they're gone. I'm free. I'm not carrying a weight. Not carrying a weight. But it's about caring about all these weights of the past. You got to let it go. Reminder, don't compare yourself to anyone. That was my biggest mistake because I am bad all by myself, and you are too. Don't allow other people's opinions affect how you see yourself because people with low self-esteem want to bring other people down with them. Misery loves company. It can be your own family, your own mama. You got to have discernment, and you got to read people. People don't always have your best interests in mind, especially if you... Think, look how they're doing to Tyler. She did nothing wrong. She's like, y'all see, if y'all follow Tyler on Instagram, I swear Tyler is so me. <laughs> Tyler is so me. That video they made with the, like, the tiger costumes, they was just being, they were just having fun. And like, that's the attitude a lot of pretty girls have. And people swear up and down they hate these people. I'm like, how? Like, how do you hate somebody who's so beautiful? It's, re- it's crazy to me but it also should let you know that if you got a lot of people hating on you for no reason don't let it be like is it because I, i'm worthless don't do that that's what my mistake was when i was younger excuse me don't let other people's opinions get to you affect you at all you remember that girl that cheated with my baby father don't let people's opinions get to you don't let it affect how you see yourself you know you're a bad bitch. Are you that? You know what I'm saying. And if you're not, if you want to be, you got, you can just work on yourself. That's what I started to do. Just work on your mental health. Work on your spiritual health. Work on your physical health. And everything else will fall in place naturally. Work on your self-respect, setting boundaries, letting go of those who no longer serve you. I'm still working on that. <laughs> but you gotta work on it, right? And that's all life is about is being the best version of yourself you can be. And I'm probably at the best version of myself I've ever been. Being an influencer helps too. Having multiple streams of validation helps. The male gaze ain't 
don't cut it all the time so don't just seek for that only seek for other forms of validation you know when i was going to work customers will always compliment me i will always get gifts from co-workers that like me i mean even you guys you guys validate my you know you guys say i'm helping you guys and that's validation for me knowing that i'm helping people you have to have multiple streams of validation it can't just be one so building confidence takes work and you have to put in your work you know others can help you you can have a therapist help you spiritual teachers but you got to put the work in the valuing valuing yourself you know find what makes you happy fuck everybody else because that's all you've been worried about this whole time your whole life other people we gotta stop doing that recovering people pleasing one-on-one is about to be a new series i'm trying to tell you because we gotta work on stop people pleasing because it doesn't help nobody but it just hurts us more in the end anyway so all in all i hope i was able to help anybody out there with my story um and how what I've, I've learned over the years how to heal how to love yourself all over again how to be more confident setting boundaries welcoming your feelings when they arrive taking care of yourself forgiving yourself don't compare yourself and don't allow other people's opinions affect how you see yourself so if you guys have any questions let me know and like comment subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for listening.